in this crucible, silver is being heated to around 1000 degrees Celsius. The intense conditions inside the crucible mean that the material actually changes its physical state. Its structure is altered as more space forms between the usually tightly packed particles. It's no longer the rigid, fixed shape it was. Impurities rise to the top and can be removed. Having gone through these intense conditions, it is now ready to be shaped and moulded by the artist. What if this time in our lives was a crucible? What if this intense experience was refining us, making us able to be shaped and moulded? Now, make no mistake, this is a time of real tragedy. We live in a country with one of the highest death rates from COVID-19 in the world. There are new waves of unemployment and poverty. People are marking milestones in their lives alone. People are being born and dying without all their loved ones around them. This is a dark time. But the God of the Bible is a redeemer. Our God can take the very worst circumstances and create some good in the midst of it. Our God can even take crucifixion and transform it into resurrection. Paul, one of the first followers of Jesus, writes to a community in Rome and says, God causes all things to work together for the good of those that love him. God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him. All things, even this. I will purify you the way metal is refined and will remove all your impurity. So how is God refining us in the heat and pressure of this crucible? The times we're living through mean that almost everyone has experienced a shift in priorities. People have become aware of their own weaknesses and frailties. And some have become aware of hidden strengths. Can we allow God to shape our priorities and values? For some people, the experience of isolation or anxiety has brought things to the surface that they would rather keep buried deep. If that's you, it's not easy. But could you see it like that dirt that rises to the surface of the silver so that the artist can deal with it, remove it and leave the silver more as it was meant to be. Look, I have refined you, but not like silver. I have purified you in the furnace of affliction. Just as this time can be a crucible for us as individuals, it can be a crucible for us together as church. A time when we can allow God to mould us and shape us as church, to reset our values and our priorities. Let's be honest, our ideas and practices as church can be pretty rigid and pretty fixed. Here are two pictures I saw on Facebook of people doing worship at home. 
Uh, here are the people who usually sit at the back. And here are the people who usually sit on the balcony. Heading into lockdown meant that so many of the things we took for granted as church were taken away. But we've discovered new ways to be together. If we ever thought that the church was defined by buildings or furnishings, we can forget that now. And when we could no longer meet together for fellowship, people have been getting creative, sending notes, having lunch together over video link, reading together. This hasn't driven us apart. This has driven us closer together. And we are loving that our online church community has so many more people in it who haven't regularly worshipped with us before. God is changing us. Will we say yes to the change? He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. There's a question I find really helpful to ask any time I look at a church community, and it's this. When Jesus imagined the church, is this what he imagined? When Jesus imagined the church, is this what he imagined? How is Jesus' dream for what his people would be expressed in our words, uh, in our priorities, in our activities, in our interactions, in our decor, in everything that we do as church? What parts express Jesus? And what parts don't? What part don't express Jesus' dream for his people? Is there anything that God has stripped away from us in this time of lockdown that we ought not to pick up again when it's over? A lump of silver might have impurities throughout Things that make it less than what it ought to be. Things that the artist doesn't want in there. But in its normal state, these impurities are actually part of the structure. They're part of the shape. You can't remove them. You can't get to them to get them out when the material is rigid. But when the material is heated in the crucible, the artist can remove anything that isn't meant to be there. Is there anything about our life as church together? Even things that have been part of our structure or our core that God might want to remove. And likewise, what new things have we learned in this time that we ought to continue in? when lockdown is over? These aren't just questions for church leaders to ask, these are questions for all of you. God is changing us. Will we say yes to the change? The crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. Now here's the question, when lockdown is over, Will you rush back to the way things were? Why? Now it could be that when that time comes, we will maybe experience a strong psychological urge to seek comfort in returning to whatever our habits and routines and norms were before. But we have been changed. We can't return to business as usual. We can't go back to how things were before. And to try to is to waste this opportunity to allow God to refine and shape us. 
In weeks to come, we're going to be thinking about different ways that God wants to form us as individuals and together as church. Maybe things that God wants to to call out in us or things that God maybe wants to remove from us. And as we go through this process, we want you to remember two things. The first is that this change will not happen by your effort. This is not a self-improvement program. This is not about us trying hard to be better Christians. This is about putting ourselves in God's hands and allowing God to change us. This change will not happen by your effort. The second thing is that this change will not happen without your willingness. Our current experience will not automatically form us more into who God wants us to be. We have to deliberately and consciously put ourselves in God's hands and allow God to change us. That means we are open to our priorities being reset. Um, We allow our bad points to be challenged. We are willing to have our hearts healed. It means we'll have to do some reflecting and some thinking and some soul searching before God. This change will not happen without your willingness. This change will not happen by your effort. God is changing us. Will we say yes to the change? God who causes all things to work together for good. We say yes to your refining. We say yes to your shaping. We say yes to you. Amen.